Welcome, brothers and sisters, to today's Morning Heart Devotion. And to start, we'd like to offer greetings to our Heavenly Parent and True Parents. 천징 참포님께 겸배 바로 And to lead us into the family pledge, I'd like to invite our brother Milhan Stevens. 가정 맹세 1. 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 번향 땅을 찾아 번연의 창조 이상인 지상 천국과 천상 천국을 장건할 것을 맹세하나이다. 이 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님을 모시어 천주의 대표적 가정이 되며 중심적 가정이 되어 가정에서는 호자 국가에서는 중심, 세계에서는 성인, 천주에서는 성자의 가정의 도리를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 3. 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 4대 신정권과 3대 왕권과 황족권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 4. 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님의 창조 이상인 천주대 가족을 형성하여 자유와 평화와 통일과 행복의 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 5. 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 매일 주체적 천상 세계와 대상적 지상 세계의 통일을 향해 전진적 발전을 촉진화할 것을 맹세하나이다. 6. 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님의 대신 가정으로서 천운을 움직이는 가정이 되어 하늘의 축복을 주변에 연결시키는 가정을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 7. 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 본연의 혈통과 연결된 위하는 생활을 통하여 심정문화 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 8. 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 천여국 시대를 맞이하여 절대 신앙, 절대 사랑, 절대 복종으로 신인의 일체 이상을 이루어 지상 천국과 천상 천국의 해방권과 석방권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. Thank you, Reverend Milhan. And to open us up in prayer, I'd like to invite up Reverend Levi Doherty. So, Reverend Doherty, if you can please unmute and offer your prayer. Good morning. Uh, whenever I think about praying, I think about my mother. And she would always sing this little tune before she would pray. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care. I come to thee on bending knees, repenting for my sins. Come to thee and bid me at my father's throne. Take all my wants and wishes known. Most beloved Heavenly Parent, we come to you this morning as your children to live a life of a divine principle. In this world, you have so much to do. 
There are 24 different time zones all over this world. Right now, as, as it is, the time we are now beginning, Korea is now closing. The East is rising and you're in every single one of those moments in our life. We thank you so much for our true parents because you know, without them, we'd not even be here. We would not even understand the value of what love is all about. How to even think about reaching our divinity by studying your word and your divine principle. We thank you so much for this day because we have another chance to repent, to live according to your will and your way. We thank you for your grace and your mercy and your divine love for us. Thank you for the leadership that has carried us thus far in this journey towards building a better world, a better people, a better family, a divine family centered on you and your grace and your mercy. We thank you for our true mother, for she's still carrying on the, the cross of indemnity, whether when we see her, she's smiling and cheering us on, but we have no idea what she's going through in her life. Thank you so much for the leadership who have to work under her. For they too are carrying a burden of, can they do it or not? Can we fulfill or not? Can we bring this to pass? Or should we leave, leave it alone? We, we cannot stop. We have to keep moving forward. And this morning is another morning that we can add to our understanding of how to become children more deeply, more, more divine in every way. Thank you for this moment that we can move out of the realm of satanic influence of the fallen nature. For dear God, you know it's all around us and every sense of the way it's everywhere in our schools our our churches our, our our businesses our streets our homes everywhere we are making a difference by building divine families centered on you centered on your love and we are much stay strong so help us i pray dear god to be strong in your will many times we understand what we should do but we don't carry it out as much. And we pray and repent this morning for those things. I promise you we will do it. This we pray this morning as we prepare ourselves to hear your lessons one more time, to strengthen us and build us and help us to become what we need to be in the United States of America and across the world. This we pray now in all of our names, blessed are you and amen. Thank you, uh, Levi Dory. Thank you so much. We could not see you in person so long time. Someday, I hope I can see you. We can talk each other. God bless you, Levi Dory. Kamsamida. Thank you. Thank you so much, Reverend Dory, for uh, that wonderful opening prayer. And now, brothers and sisters, we like to take this time to go into a breakout so that we'll be able to share our gratitude and appreciation with one another. And so if you're prompted to join, click, please click join. And if you're joining here by yourself, please take this time to reflect on your gratitude. So let us go into our breakouts.
Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I hope you had a wonderful time uh, to be able to share your gratitude uh, with one another. And to share with the whole community first, um, I'd like to yeah, invite up Ms., uh, Dr. Tyler Hendricks. So Dr. Hendricks, if you can please unmute and share your gratitude. Okay, thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to speak a little quietly here. Dr. Yong, good morning. And for me, it's morning. Uh, I'm in America at the moment. And um, well, my gratitude is for because we came back a few days ago from Korea. Uh, and so we're with our family. And, um, and so I'm grateful for family and for lineage. I've come to appreciate when you're separated, when you're with your family, when you're separated, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And so, um, so I really appreciate family by coming back and lineage. And because your family is forever, is eternal. Mm -hmm. I used to, when father talked about lineage, I didn't understand for many, many decades. But when you become a uh, grandparent, you understand more, at least for me. And uh, lineage never changes. If you've got a problem with your parents, your children, uh, we have to work it out because it'll, it'll be with us forever in spiritual world. Um, and your family is so close that it's, you can just go to the door, you walk in, and there's love there. And there's, uh, oh, you're hungry? Here, I'll give you some food. Oh, you know, you're difficult. You need a place to live? Come on, you can live with me. And it's just automatic. I've got an extra room. You can come, stay with us. Stay, you know, um, There's that love there. Um, and um, true parents taught us that. And true parents established that. True parents have what brought the lineage centered on God, yeah. God's lineage. God feels like that. Father said many times, we make a home where God wants to visit, mm -hmm. you know, because God's part of our family, you know, that's it. God's our parents. God's my parents. And we're all part of God's family. And uh, so let's all make a home where mm -hmm. God wants to visit. Wow. And uh, and stay with us, yeah. Yeah, and then God, just like our parents, want to give us everything, and God's given us everything. So let's be good children to God. Okay, yeah. that's my gratitude for this Thank morning. Thank you, you. Uh, Dr. Hendricks. Wow, after too long time, we reach that kind of the realization. Well, it takes a long time, right? Thank you so much, my brother Hendrik. You're beautiful and really inner sharing. Anyway, my brothers and sisters, you know, we inherited our true parents, God's blood lineage. We are same blood lineage under God. That's why blessed family is so precious. I really challenge it is, of course, my family is so precious, but how can I feel each one of our blessed family as my own family member? as owned by blood lineage, how can I love my neighbor blessed family same as my own family? I think this is a really God's wish and true parent wish to reach that kind of level. That is the real and substantial kingdom of heaven, centering on our family and blessed family. Thank you very much, Tyler uh, Hendrix, for your beautiful sharing, really touched my heart. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Hendricks, for such a beautiful uh, gratitude point. And to share next, I'd like to invite up Mr. John O'Connor. So Mr. O'Connor, if you can please unmute and share. Mr. O'Connor, are you yes. able to? Oh, there you go. Yes. You see me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, well, I just, this morning I was on with Milhan, and, uh, you know, it's so wonderful to see uh, Levi Doherty. 
and I work with him and such a good hearted, incredibly deep man standing up for true parents for all these decades. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, so good to work with him. He was always there to be, uh, leading and leading a song and leading in a speech and giving a presentation and organizing. And it was him and Tom McDivitt and Michael Jenkins, people like that I worked with in the eighties and just, uh, so good to see such people with uh, kind of a caring and an ongoing faith no matter what and so i just so grateful to have experience with these kind of folks and uh, they just have given so much of their lives to true parents and always indebted to them always try to find a way to be more like them and uh, make american leadership more uh more uh, caring and giving and uh, understanding and also more, uh, you know, more providential. So I just appreciate so much knowing Levi and God bless him and his wife, Claire. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, John uh, O'Connor. Yeah, I really agree with you. I had a beautiful experience with him, you know, when we, our movement started of the family value movement centering on Christian ministers. I was uh, in Washington, Washington, and Maryland, and then I walk together with him together. So he is like a great MC, great singer, great speaker. Wow! <laughs> yeah, yes. very, nice. very true. Yeah, this morning I was happy to see him again. Thank you very much, John and Okono, for your recognition. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. O'Connor, uh, for that beautiful sharing. And now, brothers and sisters, let us uh, take this time to prepare our hearts and our minds to well receive our internal guidance for this morning uh, from our Continental Director of North America, Dr. Chonshik Yong. So, welcome, Dr. Yong. <clears throat> good morning, good morning. My dear brothers and sisters, clergy and ambassador for peace, 안녕하십니까? Wow, just now, Dr. Hendrik sharing is really really, really beautiful. His inner sharing is really, really touched my heart. Yes. You know, yesterday, the GPA graduation ceremony was held at UTS. 111 people were graduated, 108 GPA members and three young adults. More than three <coughs> family members, including GPA families, gathered. Yesterday's graduation ceremony was thrown into a state of feverish excitement GPA. I have been to America and attended many, many, many meetings and events and conferences so far, but yesterday's graduation ceremony was the best I have ever seen. It was truly, truly the scene of the work of the Holy Spirit of God, who is living and working. So it took about four hours, but it felt like a 30, min 30 minutes event. GPA is really our hope, you know, and it felt like the future. I thought it was a such an event that God directly showed us where the unification movement should go in the future. It was really incredible. You can feel that God is really living God. We can hear from each person's of a testimony, the atmosphere, entire room is really fully occupied by God's Holy Spirit. I hope when you have a time, please you can watch the yesterday event it was really, really beautiful. That's why I'm going to have this kind of a GPA event next year as a national event. I want to find a more bigger place to invite all American brothers and sisters to participate in this kind of a wonderful event. And especially those who are serving for the sake of the world as a Chinese missionary, they are the one who really create such a beautiful atmosphere. So our movement, where to go? Very clear. Need to serve the world. 
Uh, six of GPA graduates uh, gave very inspiring and moving testimonies. Uh, we look at that, how beautiful they are, really tearfully sharing. Having USA and CIG missionaries offer very beautiful songs as well. GPA director Roland, oh, he's my now hero. He gave uh, the congratulation remark and President Nao Kiwi gave also a few beautiful congratula congratulatory message. I gave a keynote address. This is a part of a commencement ceremony and cake cutting ceremony and group photo. You see the even second floor, some of them are you know, outside. It was a really, really beautiful event. And three cheers of Ang Manse. Yeah. Today, I'd like to talk about the proclamation of Chun Il Gu from True Mother's Anthology, Book One. The proclamation of Chun Il Guk. In the Old Testament age, we called God Jehovah. And in the New Testament age, we called him God the Father. From now on, we must change the way we call God. When you pray, please address God as Heavenly Parent. The name Heavenly Parent is smooth in English, and it is meaningful in Korean, too. The first words you say when you pray should be Heavenly Parent, and then Beloved, True Parents of Heaven, Earth, and Humankind. We usually refer to God as Heavenly Father, but in the era of the Chun Il Gu, when True Mother proclaimed the Foundation Day, God the Father was officially changed to Heavenly Parents. Of course, True Father often referred to God as a Heavenly Parents, but True Mother officially proclaimed this to all people in the universe. This is a truly astonishing statement. Next. Foundation Day is the start of Chanoguk. Since Korea is our heavenly parents' homeland, all nations and peoples must come to Korea and enthusiastically cooperate in order to make Korea into God's substantial homeland. Heaven has prepared for Foundation Day for a long time. As we know, when central figures did not fulfill their responsibilities, God did not work through them again. We must help the second generation members and ensure that we are all victorious. We must cooperate through all possible means. The first Israel and second Israel must cooperate with Korea, the third Israel, and ensure that it is restored at all cost. True Father should not be seen only as a Messiah, but in the context of the victorious true parents. All people and organizations must testify about true parents. This is a precious blessing and a shortcut in accomplishing the ideal of a true family. Yes, Foundation Day is the start of the Chun Il Gu. Chun Il Gu has not yet been completed. For the completion of the Chun Il Gu, the sovereignty and people must be restored with at least one nation as the basic unit. Therefore, the most urgent task of the declaration of the Chun Il Gu is for the Republic of Korea, the third Israel chosen by God to become the substantial Chun Il Gu. From now on, all Unification Church members around the world have to do their best to help the Republic of Korea, you know, the homeland of the Heavenly Parents, become a complete Chun Il Gu. Recently, about Dr. Yoon, and he came back from Cambodia, he met uh, uh, Prime Minister Hun Sen, you know, we, we, have, uh, we can have a chance to hear his report. It was really, really incredible kind of happening. I think we can hear very soon many things, really good things going on, centering on about the Korea. 
the, the United States as the elder son nation should give a priority, top priority to helping fatherland Korea, its a parent country. Next. I have begun a new page in history through Chan Sang-kyang, Pyang Wa-kyang, and Cham pumo -kyang. It is not enough to just tell the story generally. You must clearly testify about true parents. Though you have attended true parents, you have not truly known them. And this has caused serious problems. Vision 2020 is our goal to find and establish true parents' royal authority in Korea. Providential first and second generation members must march together to find our heavenly parents' homeland. The three providential nations, Korea, the United States, and Japan, must change by investing their maximum effort and by living up to their faith at the risk of their lives at this point. So now, mother talking about here, Chan Sung Gyeong and Pyong Hwa Gyeong and Chen Bu Mo Gyeong, this is one of the main textbooks. Now, recently, true mother, of course, these uh, three books are very important. I try to mother, try to make as a one scripture. So then everybody can uh, study uh, just like a Bible, you know? So now, really, uh, Korean History Committee, they are really making, making that. Uh, so I think we can, of course, we need to study three uh, scriptures, Chan Song Gyeong, Pyong Hwa Gyeong, Chan Bu Mo Gyeong, but now mother really uh, put her effort to make as a one book, like a Bible. So we can see someday, we can, uh, we can see that uh, the beautiful uh, through mother's uh, scripture. Leaving divine principle today, another chapter, new chapter, the principle of creation 53, the realm of God's direct dominion. Until now, I'm talking about the realm of God's indirect dominion, but from today, I'd like to talk about God's direct dominion. Let's study EDP content first. Realm of direct dominion. What is the realm of God's direct dominion? Human beings abide in the realm of direct dominion when, as subject partners and object partners, they unite in the love of God to form a four-position foundation and become one in heart with God. In this realm, they freely and fully share love and beauty according to the will of the subject partner, thus realizing the purpose of goodness. The realm of direct dominion is the realm of perfection. <clears throat> what is the meaning of God's direct dominion over human beings? Once Adam and Eve had perfected themselves as individuals centered on God, they were to live together as one, forming the four position foundation in their family. Living in oneness with God's heart, they would have led a life of goodness, sharing the fullness of love and beauty with Adam as the head of the family. What will the world be like when the natural world abides under the direct dominion of human beings. When a fully mature person relates with the diverse things in nature as his object partners, they come together to form a four position foundation. People who are in total resonance with God's heart will lead the natural world in the free flowing sharing of love and beauty and the entire universe will realize goodness. In such a manner, human beings will exercise direct dominion over all things. Yes, let's study Father's word. Discovering humankind's portion of responsibility. It is quite surprising too, that the divine principle describes a portion of responsibility for mankind, that is, the realm of dominion based on accomplishments and the realm of God's direct dominion. You should be aware what an amazing discovery this is. 
Who is being connected and with what? The connection is possible only through the love of the completed Adam. It is possible when Adam becomes mature and stands in the position of having completed his portion of responsibility, then becomes one with a woman, becoming the center of horizontal and vertical love. Humankind should go the way of completing and linking the realm of dominion based on accomplishments and the realm of God's direct dominion. Then men can be completed as men and the same for women. This will be the result. Men and women who have received the love of God can marry and become one by uniting the realm of dominion based on accomplishments through the principle and the realm of God's direct dominion. Centered on love horizontally and vertically, finally standing on a standard centered on love. That is why this becomes the completion of the universe. That is to say, the completion of God's ideal, the central core of what human beings desire. Yes. It is a surprising fact that there is a there is an indirect dominion and a di direct dominion cons uh, concerning the perfection of Adam and Eve. This is a really great discovery. No one discovered so far, and true parents discover this one. There is a God's indirect dominion, and there is also God's direct dominion. Wow. We did not know this, you know. First time our true father discovered and then very clear, what should I do on the God's indirect dominion? And what's the real meaning of the God's direct dominion? And the connection between this indirect dominion and direct dominion is possible only through the love of Adam and Eve who have perfected their individual selves in the place where Adam and Eve keep absolute purity and receive God's blessing, the position where they become one vertically, horizontally, spiritually, and physically, and share love are where indirect dominion and direct dominion connect. Therefore, we bless a family, bless children, including first generation, should know that God's direct dominion and indirect dominion are connected through the marriage blessing and should spend the first night where the bride and groom become one in a very precious way. You have to receive the benediction of Abel or your parents before starting the family. The, complete, the, the, the completion of the universe is the completion of the marriage of Adam and Eve. This is really incredible guidance. Today's youth ministry, the completion stage church. Let's just start. The completion stage church must offer one's everything beyond tithe. Formation stage churches must pass around the offering bag and make visits. However, since growth stage churches have members that continuously come on their own, the pastor does not have time to visit members. Next, the completion stage church does not need the name or title church. The family church becomes the center of the completion stage church and the large chapel should become a place to hold banquets. Gatherings of that same level and style must be held in church. It is having the names family ministry, love ministry, or something and holding a banquet with longing, devotion, and love. The completion stage church is a banquet house. The formation stage church must become a banquet house for repenting sins and being grateful. The growth stage church becomes a banquet house for celebrating being resurrected one level. And the completion stage church especially becomes a banquet house of love. Yeah. 
The completion stage church must offer once everything be on tight. And a completion stage church should lead a, a daily life of worship, not just only you know, worshiping on Sunday. You have to offer your heart and chosen with the heart of the worshiping heaven in every moment. So that you are every minute, every second, every hour. So it is a time to worshiping for God. And then finally go to the church and attending Sunday service. So without that why our daily life, each moment, each hour, very important. Each moment, each hour, each hour is like worshiping heaven. How beautiful. This is the really out of the channel group. Formation stage must pass around the offering bag and the pastor need, need to be to this home and that home because pastor need to go because people do not know. And then I encourage them to come to Sunday service. Please come to Sunday service, join Sunday service. Please give offering. This kind of the level is a formation stage. However, since growth stage churches have members and guests that continuously come on their own, the pastor does not have the time to visit members, right? Next, the family church becomes a center of the completion stage church. The large chapel, uh, ch chapel of the church should be a place where people with a longing gathering and feast on Sunday. You should have a frequent meeting with the people of the same level uh, or, or same style. And we must testify of God who lives and walks in the church and return joy and glory to him. That's why Father saying that completion church is centering on testimony, how God is working through, through me and through my family. That's why the Sunday service mainly focus on God's living testimony. We need to hear that how is really God working? How can we meet God? How can Heavenly Father through my own family? So this is a completion stage. Completion stage should focus on living testimony. Any internal guidance, any about the, about the Sunday service content should be centering on living testimony. And then everybody enjoy, everybody really grateful, and they really have a longing on each other, truly feel, wow, here is God, here is the Holy Spirit, here is a kind of the kingdom of heaven. Blessed families should experience the small kingdom of heaven in the church chapel. It is a banquet with a longing and chongsong devotion and love. The completion stage church is a banquet house of true love. Next. The place true parents are at is the banquet house. If we look at the course of the three growth periods, we need to reflect on what kind of church our church is today and how the pastor is edu educating the members the pastor himself stands in the forefront and gradually pulls up the member's spirits, but depending on the member's atmosphere, the pastor might actually be dominated and pulled down by them. If a pastor has been pastoring for a long time, it is easy to be pulled and controlled by the environment. When a member does wrong, the pastor who scolds and worries from a parent's position is a grown pastor. One who visits door to door and greets is a formation stage pastor. And a church where people gather so much that the pastor tries to run away after preaching is a completion stage church. The reason a pastor avoids his position is because it is difficult to handle since there are too many people gathering. So he stealthily disappears. In the early days, True Father avoided it very well. However, the members smell True Parent's love and find out where he is. Originally, 
the church of the completion stage love needs to gather enough people to a point of causing an incident where people are crushed to death, where there is honey, bees and butterflies flock to it. Honey does not go looking for bees and butterflies. The same is true for a completion stage church. Yeah. <laughs> the place where true parents are is always a banquet house, considering the division of the church in terms of the three stage growth process of formation, growth, and completion. What kind of a church is our church today? And what is our pastor's standard? The most important thing in ministry is that the pastor himself should be at the forefront and focus on raising the heart of the members. Pastor should not be drawn by the circumstances of the church members and be dominated and pulled down by them. And then church, the pastor need to go down and serving and then, you know, go to visit, please come and join. Wow, this level is very low level. That everybody, each one of the members need to take ownership, not just only rely on the pastor. Everybody take ownership. If a pastor has been pastoring for a long time, it is to be pulled and controlled by the environment. When a member does wrong, the pastor who scold and worry from a pastor's position is already grown pastor. Sometimes wrong and they need to tell, need to speak out, this is wrong. Our church cannot be like that. That means that kind of level church already grown up. Originally, the church of the completion stage of love needs to gather enough of people to a, a point of the causing an incident where people are, are crushed to death where there is a honey and bees and butterfly flock to it. Honey does not go looking for bees and butterflies, I tell you again. The model church that true mother asked to create or the church that shows others refers to this kind of the church. That's why I really try to reduce even my sermon become shorter. And I really want to put more testimony, more exciting event, and then testify God is a living God. So that is really our goal. And now I'm trying to create that kind of church centering our Clifton Church. Of course, there are many, many challenges, but it takes time. But now we are very much exciting to uh, reach that kind of standard. Thank you very much. Today, um, about another uh, uh, living uh, testimony. And we will have the time to listen to the testimony of the team who went on a mission to Zambia. We welcome Christopher, Benjamin, Ohana, and Sonil Eugene who went on a, a mission to Zambia. Let's hear their beautiful testimony. Thank you very much, my brothers and sisters. Thank you so much, Dr. Young, for that incredible message you have shared with us. And as Dr. Young just introduced, the living testimony givers are will be the Chonoguk Youth Ministry from GPA who went overseas to Zambia. So Zambia team, please share. Morning, everyone. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Young. Uh, yes, we are the CIGYM Zambia team. And before we get into anything, we would like to introduce ourselves. So um, Yes, my name is Christopher Creambiel. I am a, a team leader and also a young adult uh, CIG missionary. Good morning, everyone. My name is Benjamin Berge, and I'm a third year Chenoguk missionary. Good morning. My name is Sano Tamashiro. I'm a second year Chenoguk missionary. Good morning. My name is Ohana Aguilera Santos, and I'm a second year Chenoguk missionary. Morning. Uh, my name is Eugene Youngcook, and I'm a second year strategy missionary. Yes, that is our team. So now we would like to share a bit about our experience in Zambia. Uh, as you can see here on this first slide, this is a picture we, we took in Zambia. This is of the Victoria Falls, one of the seven natural wonders of the world. So if you know Victoria Falls, then you know that's it's. It takes place in Zambia. Here's a little bit about Zambia. It is 
uh, country in Africa, in the southern region. The capital is Lusaka, which is where we, uh, that's the main city where we did our witnessing activities. And it's a Christian nation, officially. It's a very new country, declared independence in 1964. Um, and also about our movement. Uh, the movement began in 1975 with the, uh, with the 1975 missionaries. Uh, the German missionary, American missionary, and the Japanese missionary. And we actually had the honor and the privilege to work with one of them, uh, the German missionary, Rudolf Fabar. He is, he ever since 1975, he has remained in Zambia. So from him, we could really inherit and see what is the true heart of a missionary. So it really feels like this, this mission country is not just temporary, but this is my eternal mission. If you read in True Mother's memoir, uh, at one point, she talks about the sausage factory in Zambia, and he is the one who actually started that sausage factory. On top of that, he also began a uh, school called Barlerstone Park School. And here are some of the leaders that we worked with during our time in Zambia. We have the national leaders, Reverend David and Betty Piri. There's also the IAYSP president, Sundo Motewa, and the sub-regional UPA youth envoy, Philip Karamagi. And these are the people that we really worked closely with. Uh, they supported us in our witnessing activities. Uh, they have guided us in how to witness and also supported us in, in many different ways. One person we would like to highlight is actually the national leader, Reverend Peary. He's a very, very amazing divine principal lecturer, actually. One of our first experiences when we arrived was attending one of his one day divine principal workshops where he lectured for six hours straight, <laughs> uh, the divine principal, to just two guests. But he gave his whole heart into it for six hours straight. And it was such a deep and um, biblical outlook in the divine principle. So from, from these leaders, we definitely inherited a lot, a lot of the heart of witnessing, the heart of a missionary, the heart of wanting to share the divine principle. And uh, here's our team. So we, are, we introduced uh, the five of us on this call, but in addition to us five, we also have two members of the Mission Phoenix program. Mission, Mission Phoenix is uh, a sub-program within GPA, which uh, mainly takes care of young first generation. So we also had Abraham Salazar and Kevin Reyes join our team for part of the mission. And also we had a young second generation from Zambia, uh, partway through our, our mission, she joined our team and supported us in our witnessing activities. And here's our vision. We have our internal goal, which is to tune into true parents' boundless heart of salvation. This is the goal that we all united upon in heart. Uh, all of us strove to, each day, strove to experience and understand true parents' heart, specifically the heart of salvation. And this really drove us through our witnessing efforts and our external goal uh, that we were starting to achieve during this time was to have 40 guests to receive Second Advent and raise up seven guests, seven of those 40 guests to become full-time members, meaning they would be missionaries themselves. They would be staying at the center, uh, witnessing, carrying out witnessing activities. Uh, but this can only be accomplished when we truly unite upon this internal goal of tuning into your parents' heart of salvation. And here's our main witnessing activities. We would have daily street witnessing every afternoon, Mondays through Fridays. Uh, we also began a weekly culture talk on Thursdays, which is like a character education event where we gave yeah, character education based on the divine principle. We held service projects, uh, co uh, coordinating with YSP, and also two-day divine principle workshops and seven-day divine principle workshops. One thing I would like to mention is that when we arrived in Zambia, there wasn't so much of a structure. They were having uh, weekly uh, one-day divine principal seminars, and, and occasionally they would have seven-day workshops as well. But during this time, we took, they gave us the ownership and initiative to create our own workshops. So these seven-day workshops that we had, uh, it was all coordinated by us. We even had a chance to give lectures during these workshops. And uh, it was really such an amazing experience for us to not just bring people to the center, but also coordinate and create workshops where we can express uh, a heart of love, our heart of wanting to share the divine principle, the heart of uh, really tuning into that, that heart of salvation. 
here's some pictures from our witnessing efforts from, work, some, from some of the workshops. One thing I'll also like to mention about Zambia is that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's a Christian nation officially. So pretty much everyone that you talk to is a Christian. So when you teach divine principle, it's very different from the way we teach it here in America. Here in America, it's a very broad audience. You have people of many different backgrounds and religions and beliefs, but here everyone is Christian. So when you teach divine principle, you have to teach it from the Christian perspective. And you really have to focus and, and tune into uh, what, is, what is the heart of Christianity. You have to understand and really know uh, the guests' love and appreciation for God and for Jesus. Uh, so really, it required us to really look into the Bible and, and tune into that, that aspect of witnessing. For, for all of us missionaries, it was a very, very deep and amazing experience. We also had some service projects. We uh, had service projects at orphanage and at schools. And this was also an opportunity for guests to get involved and, you know, feel like they can support the community through YSP. And here's some more uh, information about our witnessing. Uh, in these pictures here, you can see this is a, the main witnessing area. In the top picture, you can see that it's a just a dirt road right outside the center. And yeah, it looks, you know, a little, little messy. But on that road, a lot of spiritual activity took place, a lot of witnessing, a lot of junk song. And this road was very, very close to uh, a university uh, called Eden University. And maybe you noticed a video playing in the right. That is when we first arrived. It rained a lot. We, we arrived during the rainy season. And pretty much whenever it rained a lot, the whole road would just be flooded. <laughs> so this, I just want, we want to show you this because so you can get a little bit of an idea of what witnessing was like in Zambia. Here's some more pictures of witnessing, meeting with guests, uh, witnessing at the Eden University campus, also giving lectures at workshops. And as a result of all of our witnessing efforts, we were able to accomplish uh, approximately 720 approaches, 200 divine principle introductions. And from those introductions, we were able to have 60 consistent guests. And of those 60 consistent guests, we were able to have 15 guests receive the, the, the full or finish the divine principle. In total, we were able to give four, 400 or more divine principle lectures during our four months there. And from these pictures, these are actually pictures from the seven day workshops that we held. We had two seven day workshops and you can see in the pictures, the guests holding their certificates. Those are the ones that, that completed and finished the divine principle during those seven days. That's truly, truly an amazing experience. So now, uh, oh, and also we would like to showcase uh, some of the guests, some of the graduates of these seven day workshops. Uh, yeah, we, we did say that there's 15, but here's five of them. And uh, I would like to share a little bit about a few of them. Uh, first, I would like to share about our sister in the middle. Her name is Chilombo. She was the first one to finish the divine principle out of all the guests that we were witnessing to. And she was very, very attentive and very, very eager to learn the divine principle. And one Sunday, she was free the whole afternoon. So we took that Sunday for five hours straight, me and uh, another missionary, Sano, we just lectured for the whole five hours. And in that five hours, uh, we finished the last couple chapters of the divine principle. And we were able to experience for the first time pro proclaiming who true parents are and proclaiming that true parents are the second coming. True parents are the second advent. And also, I'd like to talk about our brother, Louis, uh, right next to Chilombo. He's a brother that we actually didn't approach him on the street. He was just walking by the center one day. And he just had this intuition, this spiritual pulling to just come into the center. And so he did. He just walked in and he was like, I feel like I need to learn something here. <laughs> so he, from that point on, we, we taught him divine principle and he continued coming and he finished the divine principle. And from that, just following that spiritual intuition, his life was able to really change from that point on. So now uh, that is our presentation. Now we would like to share our um uh, personal testimonies, our experience. So we'll begin with our brother here, Benjamin. Good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Ben. And yes, from this mission time, I really wanted to share 
the greatest lesson I learned in my experience was really finding God's love for me, God's strong, incredible desire to invest into me. And going into mission, it's very easy to, to focus on how do I love the guests? How do I give, give, and continue to give again? And that was a mindset that I continued to hold on to as I went. And it's a great mindset. Um, there was one sister who we had during a seven-day workshop, my own personal guest, and it was definitely very challenging um, to take care of her. There's a lot of challenges that went on throughout the whole seven days. But and in the moment, I only saw it as, okay, I just have to give and really focus on what I can try to give. And I hit a lot of walls in that way. Um, and kind of ending it off, it was a tough experience, but now really taking time to reflect on it. I could see how much actually God really gave me that, that person, um, his daughter, so I could really learn to grow this parental heart. There's so much I could learn. And so really wrapping up this whole experience in Zambia, what I can see is how God was guiding me so much through each and every single person I met, through each and every single experience. So I find so much gratitude for God's personal love, personal touch for me in my life. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sunil. And today I want to share my experience on understanding more why I personally need shoe paints. And before GPA, something that I would always question myself about is why I personally need shoe paints. And it was a lot easier for me to understand why the world needs shoe paints or why others need shoe paints. But being able to teach divine principle whole way, the whole way through really helped me Help me understand this question even more. And I was able to see the process and change throughout. And it's really made me realize that this is a change that I have experienced myself, but is also the change that I will continue to experience when growing my relationship with true parents. And so being able to see someone change through divine principle and teaching divine principle made me recognize that I myself as well can make this change through growing my relationship with true parents and even growing my relationship with divine principle. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Ohana and I also want to share a brief testimony about our time in mission. Um, I feel like it's safe to say that Mission experience is not always easy. It's actually and can get very challenging. Um, and I myself faced many challenges during this mission time, faced many struggles, many times of loneliness or times when I really felt like I had nothing more to give or nothing more to invest and really feeling like giving up, um, especially being the only sister on this huge team of brothers in the beginning I, I really felt like there were times when I felt that there was no one who could really understand my heart or understand how I was feeling um, even with guests like constantly trying to search for an object partner but being rejected um, so during these times when I felt like I had nothing left to give um, I realized that mission really puts you in this position where even when you feel like you are, aren't able to or you don't have the capacity to love um, you're always going to be asked to give more, whether it's when you go out witnessing every day on a witnessing run or you, you're constantly living with local members in the same center. So you have to give. You have no choice but to love and to give every single day, even when you feel lonely or you feel like in this state of challenge. And I really feel like through that experience, I was able to reach and to touch uh, Heavenly Mother and Heavenly Parents and True Mother's heart and understand their course through that lonely experience. Um, and actually, it wasn't until we came back to America where I really saw the value and the beauty of that challenge and persevering through that struggle um, through Dr. Young giving us the opportunity to share at East Garden or even this morning through morning devotion. I really feel like there's so much more value, actually, through our experience and mission that we can share with our brothers and sisters. And it was through this experience that led me to decide to actually offer another year as a Chonoguk missionary as a third year. Um, so it truly it, it touched my heart deeply and it changed very much so to the core of who I am as well. Ah, beautiful, Ohana. Good. Good morning. Uh, yeah, so I also wanted to briefly share about my um, experience with principal in Zambia. Um, yeah, so before before GPA, uh, honestly speaking, I never really found 
divine principle that that enticing or that interesting. It was kind of just a philosophy that um, I I grew up with, and honestly, even throughout my my time with, on GPA, um, even as a missionary, uh, it was a, a big struggle for me to fully connect to the principle, especially as the absolute truth. But I think being in Zambia, like as as Chris expressed, um, it was an, an amazing experience. Uh, actually, the the workshop that I was talking about with Reverend Peary lectured for like six hours straight. I think it was me and one other one other member. I attended like the full like six hours, and it was probably one of my like most memorable experiences there. Um, so there were many workshops and many lectures like that where it was just so full of spirit and so full of life. And so time consuming, but at the same time felt like the split, like a split second where, um, yeah, like I was when this, I was looking at the guests and, um, and I felt like through them, I was able to like see um, transformation, like the power, the true power of principle, because um, the guests there, like, they're like so receptive and yeah, so many of them, like lives were like completely changed actually from the principle. I think just seeing that in Zambia like, really inspired me and really like burned this curiosity inside of me to want to further study principle, further go deeper into the, the heart of principle. The principle is the absolute truth. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. And then final one. Yes. Thank you. My personal testimony. Uh, yes. So my name is Christopher. And actually, uh, before joining this mission, I was a, a member at Carp DMV. Before then, I was also, I was I graduated GPA. I actually did CIG mission before. I went to Albania for one month, and you know, going into this mission, I thought I really knew witnessing because I've been doing it for a couple of years now. And uh, but what I came to realize is that, um, well, before. My core motivation for witnessing was to make people happy, was to encourage people to live a more joyful life through the principle. But through this experience in Zambia, actually what I felt God was guiding me, me to, it was to fight for and live for a higher, and witness with a higher motivation. One thing I, I really realized and one, what I turned to a lot was true parents, the heart of true parents. I realized that I can't just be witnessing just to make people happy, but I really have to witness because out of a heart of junk, out of a heart of hyo junk for, for our true parents. Uh, I really feel now after having many experiences, sharing about true parents, proclaiming true parents, really like, I can really begin to experience and understand our value as in the position as missionaries or being second generation, what it means to share about true parents. So this whole mission was a very, very valuable, valuable experience for, for me, for the whole team. And we were very grateful for the opportunity to share everyone this morning. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you so much. Our Zambia team, Christopher and yeah. Benjamin. Oh, hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yay, Eugene, everybody, thank you so much. It is a beautiful testimony. Kamsamida. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you. We yeah. love you too. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much to the Channel Group Youth Missionary Zambia team for your incredible, incredible testimonies. And with that, brothers and sisters, with Dr. Young's um, morning guidance and also these uh, incredible testimonies, we like to take this time to really digest and share with each other our insights and takeaways. And so if you're prompted to join a breakout room, please click join. And if you're joining by yourself, please take this time to reflect and write your reflections down. So let us go into our breakouts.
Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I hope you had a wonderful time sharing your insights and takeaways with one another. And to share with the whole community first, I'd like to invite up the BB couple, Dr. Robert and Mrs. Karen BB. So if you can please unmute and share. Good morning, everybody. Good to be right out with Yasu this morning. Handsome guy. Uh, so, uh, I'm very inspired by the missionaries, of course, that they're sharing and uh, bringing God's word, God's spirit to other parts of the world. Um, also, I'm very inspired by the vision for Sunday service. Uh, Sunday service is a place where, you know, we should have living testimonies. We come together, uh, not to just listen to a sermon, but to share with each other, because God is working not just through one person. God is working through all of us. It should be that way. And it's a chance to gather together and to share with one another. So I'm very uh, happy. You know, we're in the center of the storm here in Clifton. And Dr. Young is uh, initiating all of this here, starting off. So, uh, uh, and I like the, the analogy that he gives of, uh, you know, uh, Sunday service should be like honey, honey. And the honey doesn't go out to find the bees. The bees come to the honey. So, uh, so we're the bees. We're going to the honey today, this morning. Thank you very much. Let's hear the, from the, uh, the honey Karen. Oh, anyway, I'm uh, also, I'm really inspired about your explanation of churches, the levels of churches. Mm. Didn't hear, I think I've never heard that before, but anyway, maybe it's because I didn't study enough. <laughs> but any, <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for studying. Mm. But uh, honestly, I was so moved by our uh, young Chanukut missionaries, mm. right? And their experiences and to see how they've grown and uh, also, you know, it brings back our, our, my own memory too. And what a good experience that is to have. It's really where when you're, when you're a missionary, <clears throat> that's really where God it becomes and true parents become more real to you. Uh, so many, it, seeing them, uh, anyway, it's it's just so beautiful. Thank you so much for coming up with this type of presentation for all of us, Dr. Young. Thank you, thank Have you. you. I'm so I, I know you know when when whenever I go to the uh, the Clifton Church, I'm so excited to see our robot BB and then also the Honey Karen together, BB and Honey. Well, well combination together. Thank you so much, Robert Karen, for your sharing. Kamsamida. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, to the BB couple for that wonderful sharing. And to share next with everyone, I'd also like to invite up Mrs. Andrea Thiemann. So, Mrs. Thiemann, if you could please unmute and share. Good morning. <laughs> That's a surprise. Andrea. Good morning, Dr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yesterday, I was, I'm so much happy to see yesterday. Oh, very happy to see you, Dr. Young. Yeah. Yes, uh, oh, goodness. Uh, there was a brother in my group who shared so, so well. Um, yeah, but uh, for me, uh, what stood out to me was part, part of the testimony in which uh, I forgot his name, sorry. The brother said how he was moved by uh, watching this um, um, person receiving the six hour lecture in Zambia. And, you know, I was, I was sharing in, in my breakouts that, you know, a lot of times it, for us to be moved, uh, we really have to see transformation taking place in somebody else's life, right? So um, if uh, for him, growing up with the fine principle all his life, you know, he wasn't able to be moved as he was um, just seeing somebody else being so deeply moved by the fine principle. So. I, I, that really stood out to me. And uh, it reminds me of the importance of witnessing, you know, just to um, see people being revived through, through principle. It's what really revives us. Uh, so that's that's the one thing that stood out to me and, um, that, that I shared. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Andrea. I, I, I can see your beautiful fate 
and love really especially you how much you try your heart to love your husband and love each one of your children and so you have a strong commitment to love church wow you are one of the exemplary member in our clifton church i am so much proud of you thank you so much andrea for your beautiful sharing Kamsamida. thank you dr young Thank you, Mrs. Lehman, yeah. for that beautiful sharing. And also congratulations to your daughter for completing her second year of GPA. So yeah, awesome. right, right. <laughs> all right, and yeah, with that, thank you all brothers and sisters for uh, really sharing your heart and uh, inspirations with each other. But let's not stop here and go even beyond uh, this Morning Heart devotion so that we can share, bring all of our brothers and sisters all across the world to receive the inspiration from Dr. Young's morning guidance, as well as the living testimonies that we feature. And so whether it be uh, Zoom, Facebook, or YouTube, please don't forget to share this link. And also, I uh, just wanted to mention and really thank Dr. Kylie uh, for always preparing the transcript as well as the images of the slides that Dr. Young uses uh, on edu.familyfed.org. So thank you so much, Dr. Kylie. And if you could turn your attention towards the chat, we will be having or posting up the link for the donation page. So every single day when we're filled up well, with in spirit, we want to really be able to give back substantially to support this Morning Heart Devotion Ministry. So uh, please click on that link and uh, offer with anything that you have in your heart. So thank you so much, brothers and sisters, for your generosity. And now to receive our uh, musical offering, I'd like to invite up Mr. Dan Pfefferman. So Mr. Pfefferman, if you can please unmute and offer your music. Hi, everybody. Oh, Dan Pfefferman again. Wow, wow, what a great excitement. Thank you, Dr. Young. Wow. Because of you, I decided to come about every two weeks to wow, offer. Wow, 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 great. I can't play the guitar anymore because of my hand, but I can show some music videos that I created. And uh, today it's going to be Ocean Challenge. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, summertime, so Ocean Challenge time. I saw Dr. Young fishing for striped bass and leading <laughs> the members in the, in the River Ocean Challenge. And when I did it back in the 80s, it was Gloucester Ocean Challenge. And Father was totally crazy for, for bluefin tuna. <laughs> and uh, you'll see some great footage of Father uh, fishing for bluefin tuna here. The song is called Going for the Blue. It's a sea shanty that I wrote back then. Wow, wow. And uh, it's uh, based on Father's vision. I, I was so inspired listening to Father over the years talking about Ocean Challenge. And yeah. I finally got a chance to do it for two years. And uh, we used to fish at a place called Stellwagon's Bank uh, on the northwest corner of Stellwagon's Bank. So that you'll hear that reference referred to. Every day, the whales were out there jumping around. People paid hundreds of dollars to go see the whales, and we got to visit with them every day. They came right up to our boat. And uh, a, a shout out to uh, Otmar Weinman, who was the sound engineer for this, uh, this recording. And he also played the whistle. He didn't play it with his mouth. He played it on the, on the keyboard. So you'll hear Otmar playing the, the whistle on the, on the keyboard and me on the kazoo. But the most important thing is that when I finally played this song for Father, he liked it a lot. He liked it so much that he said he, he made a suggestion for a, one more verse. So the last verse of this uh, song was co-written by True Father. So this song is Going for the Blue by Dan Pfefferman and Reverend Sun Young Moon. Whoa! Okay, great to hear.
Yes, we're going for the blue. So cast her off me, maybe, and I'll steer our horses too. Cause we're bound for old Snow Wagon's bank and going for the blue. Yes, we're going for the blue. Thank 
So, so happy. It was a really beautiful memory with the true parents. Such a beautiful a song as a beautiful picture. I'm so excited for your next singing and performance. Thank you so much, Dan and Sujan, Kayla's father and mother. Thank you. God bless you. Wow, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Pfefferman and or the Pfefferman couple for yeah, really offering such a beautiful music video for all of us to um, to move our hearts. And with that, brothers and sisters, to be able to close out this incredible morning heart devotion experience and prayer, I'd like to invite up uh, Mr. Akihiro Funakoshi to offer the closing prayer. So please, Aki, unmute and offer the prayer. Thank you. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly parent, true parents, thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us as uh, blessed uh, couples and blessed children so many blessings. I uh, got to experience myself just uh, traveling around the U.S. and other countries too in GPA, just uh, being able to see how much foundation uh, true Oma and Appa made throughout the world that uh, they dedicated so much of their life, so much of their time and effort making this wonderful uh, spiritual and physical foundation for us to stand on. That uh, anywhere we go, we could really just see how much uh, love they gave to each and every one of us. And even though uh, we all might not be uh, the best at receiving it, I know I'm not still, uh, as we grow older, I hope uh, you could give us this uh, ability to become more grateful, receive more, and eventually be able to give it to the ones who aren't as fortunate as us. I really want to become someone who could be like pure water, like uh, true Oma always says, and really give life to the rest of the people who really need it. So thank you. I put this in all of our names, and my name, Akihiro Funakoshi, son of Yuchi, and tell me Funakoshi, Blessed Central Family, Aju. Aju, thank you, Akihiro Funakoshi. Beautiful prayer. But I just worry about you because you are too handsome, boy. I really, you know, you need to protect yourself because you are too handsome. Thank you very much, Akihiro kun. Thank you, Akihiro, for that wonderful prayer. And Dr. Young, don't worry for him being too handsome. I'm sure you'll be able to help him find a spouse in the near future. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, brothers and sisters, I just want to say thank you so much for uh, really uh, making this uh, Morning Heart Devotion an incredible experience with your attendance. And of course, Dr. Young, we love you so much. Thank you so much for always preparing your heart and uh, your blood, sweat, and tears for all of the inspirations that you give us every single morning. And with that, brothers and sisters, we'd like to wish you a happy, healthy, and victorious day today. Happy Sunday. We'll see each yeah, other tomorrow. Thank you, Ojawa, Yasutaka. Thank you, our Jambia team. Happy, nice Sunday. Bye. Bye.